refugees in Germany, the circumstances that prompted them to flee their homelands and their future in a strange land. We visited three camps to gain a better understanding of those forced from their native countries and those they left behind. Hello. Eisenhüttenstadt, 120 kilometers east of Berlin on the Polish border. The refugee facility here is a former army barracks. It takes in those who've just arrived in Germany. The Balauni family has arrived here after leaving the Syrian capital, Damascus. Their odyssey began two years ago. The flight from Syria included hiding on a fishing vessel, then inside a freight truck until they reached Germany. They have three children. Eisenhüttenstadt is having trouble dealing with the sheer number of new arrivals. The Balauni family is lucky. They've been given shelter in this barracks. But for now, the cramped surroundings are less of a problem than the inability to communicate. Rasha Balauni finds it frustrating. She laments that even visiting the doctor involves a long wait for someone who speaks their language. It would be better for everyone to have an interpreter present. She adds that the Germans quickly become frustrated and angry when we don't understand them or ask too many questions. Mohammed is also a Syrian refugee. He found his way to Germany via Libya and across the Mediterranean. He shows us his quarters in an old gymnasium. This is where the young, single men are located. There is little, if any, privacy. But Mohammed isn't bothered. He says this is a paradise compared to what they were forced to endure along the way. They often slept in forests, out in the open. If Mohammed thinks this is a paradise, we can readily imagine the treacherous passage from his native Syria. It's relatively peaceful here, none of the scattered incidents of racism that have hit other shelters. The only problem here is that the facility is running out of capacity. Containers and tents have been put up to squeeze more people in. And more refugees arrive every day. Twice per week, residents of the camp can select from donated clothing. But the storage room is only open for an hour at a time. There simply aren't enough volunteers. There's a lot of pushing, sometimes even fights break out. Everyone wants to get their share and there just isn't enough time. Riyath al-Sharafel and his family also fled the civil war in Syria. He, his wife and two children undertook the tortuous odyssey on the slim chance they might be offered asylum. He shows us the application that he and all others at the camp must fill out. But actually receiving asylum status is difficult. As refugees from a civil war, they have a right to a temporary residency. But still, each case is carefully reviewed. Those slated for deportation end up at this detention center. It's a fate the refugees in Eisenhüttenstadt hope to avoid at all costs. The second leg of our journey takes us to the heart of the German capital. This refugee shelter was originally a school named after Norwegian explorer Fridtjof Nansen. In 1922, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for his role as High Commissioner for Refugees. But at first glance, the shelter doesn't live up to its lofty namesake. Originally seen as a temporary solution, the facility is constantly undergoing renovation. It's now home to over 150 people. Omar appears to be happy enough. After all, he relies on his parents. But for his mother, life as a refugee presents a never-ending chain of challenges. 
She says the problem is that they need warm water for Omar. But to get it, they have to go down the corridor and out through the yard. It's tough. Like most others, Omar and his parents travelled to Europe by boat across the Mediterranean. They asked that their identities be kept secret to protect loved ones back home. Residents and caretakers alike do a lot of improvising to make life easier at this old school. Petra Müller Sadler had little previous experience running a kitchen, but somehow she's getting by. I just fumbled around until things started working smoothly, she says. It's not like all 150 people come at once. And they are so courteous. There is no hassle if a line forms and they have to wait. They realize we're doing our best and they get something to eat. I'm not a cook, she says. It's all pre-packaged. They eat from a plastic box. We try to make it as nice as we can, but right now there's no alternative. The refugees at this shelter seem to get along well. It's a surprise bonus, a familial atmosphere amongst those who have endured so much. Omar and his parents have found new friends. And Omar's dad is already making plans for the future. I have a university degree and would like to further my education here, he says. I want to build a foundation for my family in this country so that my son can study too. Above all, I want to live in peace without having to fear for my family. Their goal is to speak conversational German in one year and move into their own apartment. It's an astounding display of confidence considering all that they've been through and there are no assurances the family will be allowed to stay in Germany. The refugees at this facility have reason to hope. And neighbours are pitching in as best they can. It's our duty to take these people in and provide for them in their time of greatest need, says this neighbour. They need a roof over their heads at the very least. And I'm confident the city will make sure no violence breaks out between refugees and residents, as it has in other cities. Was es natürlich in anderen Städten gegeben hat zwischen Bevölkerung und Flüchtlingen, das weiß ich. Our last stop is Potsdam. Near the landmark Nikolai Kerscher stands a concrete apartment building. It's a new home for two young men from Cameroon. They left two years ago, embarking on a trip through Africa and eventually Europe. Their first refugee camp was filled with hundreds of people. Now they live here. The apartment building is in urgent need of renovation. But Patrick Ngas doesn't mind. It's quiet and nobody bothers us, he says. We're well liked. People on the street greet me with a friendly hello. Patrick is helping the other tenants finish work on a communal meeting room on the ground floor. The goal is integration rather than exclusion. Asylum seekers and locals live together under one roof. Christian Nkawa is happy to be living in Potsdam. We found living quarters right in the centre of town, he says. That helps us to integrate. Other refugee centres are often located outside the city where there's more racism. Maya Leshka is a student apprentice accompanying Patrick to the welfare office. Support like this is vital, especially because of language difficulties. And the agencies need access to special information that is difficult for non-Germans to understand. This is for the normal dog and this is for dentist. Okay, yes? okay, okay, okay. 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 
Maya Leshka could have chosen to work in a retirement home like most of the others in her class. But she would rather help asylum seekers navigate the daunting bureaucracy. German society often doesn't do enough for refugees, says Maya. We often hear that they are treated badly. I can't tolerate that kind of behavior, she says. So in a way I took on this job to make a point. Patrick and Christian's shared refugee apartment in Potsdam is just 20 square meters. It's a cramped space, but it's far better than the overcrowded facilities they're used to. Still, they're looking for something better in the long term. Patrick hopes to learn a lot here in Germany. At some point, he says, I'll return to Cameroon to pass on that knowledge. Patrick and Christian are both handymen. They hope their asylum applications will be accepted soon so that they will have better prospects of finding a job. Potsdam's solution is putting refugees in apartments rather than camps. And experts in the field say that's by far the most effective choice. Barracks, like those in Eisenhüttenstadt, often become breeding grounds for violence, drugs and all kinds of sickness. And many refugees have to stay here for up to three months. Experts are demanding better treatment for those who have braved many hardships.